Driving into Itate Village, which is inside the exclusion zone created by the Fukushima nuclear disaster, you don't really immediately notice anything out of the ordinary. I mean, you see houses and shops and everything you would expect to see in a Japanese village. And there aren't any clues that this has been uh, the site of the worst nuclear disaster in 25 years or so. The only way you really know is when you look at your Geiger counter. And here, the one I was using shows a reading that's about roughly 10 times the natural background, depending on where you are in the world. This is not enough to make you sick right away, but this is definitely enough that you wouldn't want to be living in this area anymore, which is why it's been evacuated by the Japanese government. When you get out of the car, you really start to feel that there's a difference here. Things are very quiet. The curtains are drawn in all the houses. And one of the first things we saw was this dog. Uh, She had been left by her owners because her owners couldn't take her to an evacuation center. And so they did what a lot of people in Itate Village have done. They chained her up and they leave food and water for her and come back a couple times every every week to, to refill the food and water. And basically, she's left to her own devices. The longer you're in the exclusion zone, the more you really start to notice these subtle differences. You see rice paddies that have been completely overgrown. You see farm buildings that are empty. All the livestock was slaughtered at the time of the accident, basically out of fear of radioactive contamination. And you do see some other signs of human activity. Uh, This is the only piece of graffiti I saw in my entire trip to Japan. The first symbols there are for TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, which was responsible for the meltdown. And you see uh, security personnel protecting the even more uh, dangerous exclusion zone beyond Itate. So we drove right up to the gate the furthest we could go, and that was still about 30 kilometers from the plant. There's a plume of radiation that came to the northwest, and uh, that's why Itate had to be evacuated. The other people you would see inside the exclusion zones were cleanup crews, and you would see these these groups of people scraping away the top few inches of soil to remove the contamination because, in fact, the contamination doesn't go very deep into the earth. They were sort of little by little clearing away the, the topsoil and putting it into these bags that were then piling up all over the prefecture, and it's still not clear where all these bags of contaminated soil are going to go. After visiting Itate Village, the next day we drove to Naraha Town, which is a town inside the exclusion zone to the south of the plant and directly on the seacoast. And what we saw there was very different. People hadn't been able to clean up the tsunami damage. So in other parts of Japan, coastal Japan I visited, you would barely even know a tsunami had happened. But here there were still ruined cars and houses The floodplain was completely washed out. Roads had been washed out and hadn't been repaired. And I guess to me, this is really what the nuclear disaster at Fukushima is all about, is that this this cleanup hasn't happened. Uh, People haven't been able to move on with their lives.